Welcome to First Presbyterian Mattoon. We are delighted to be gathered this morning to worship God together. Before we begin, just a couple of announcements. Immediately following worship today, we have our annual congregational meeting that will be in the fellowship hall. So remind me at the very end of our worship service, I'll say a prayer of blessing over our, our food and our meals so we can go in and just start, uh, we can start serving right away. Uh, there's some delicious soup and, and goodies out there. So please, if you can, stay for our meal. And then as the meal kind of starts, uh, as we're done, we'll start our congregational meeting. We do have these uh, packets that are there by where you pick up your bulletins. So if you didn't get one before worship today, after worship, go ahead and pick one up. And it, this is a report on everything that we conducted, all the ministry we did in 2022. We don't have any main actions to vote on except for our nominating committee for 2023. So please uh, come and have some soup and we'll talk church together. Friends, at this time, we invite you to prepare your hearts for the worship of God. Good morning. Would you please join with me in the call to worship? Praise the Lord. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. Let us worship God. Now, as you are able, please stand and join in the singing of number 40 in the yellow songbook, The Old Rugged Cross.
Please be seated. Together, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord, though you should guide us, we inform ourselves. Though you should rule us, we control ourselves. Though you should fulfill us, we console ourselves. We think that your truth too high, your will too hard, your power too remote, your love too free, but they are not. And without them, we are of all people most miserable. Now heal our confused minds with your word. Heal our divided wills with your law. Heal our troubled consciences with your love. Heal our anxious hearts with your presence, all for the sake of your Son, who loved him and gave himself for us. Now, please take a moment of silence to confess your sins. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God is doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Before we hear the scriptures read and preached today, let's pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They want God on their side. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look. You serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast day, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help. And he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. 
Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. In our New Testament reading for this Sunday, it's from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket rather they put it on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven do not think that i have come to abolish the law or the prophets i've not come to abolish but to fulfill for truly i tell you until Heaven and earth pass away. Not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That's a really good Old Testament scripture this morning. Um, because just in a kind of a nutshell, as I was thinking about it, as I was hearing Carol Ann read it, it's like when we come to worship, when we hear God's word, it's not that God just wants us to feel bad about ourselves or go about gloomy or you know, beating ourselves up but rather in response to God's goodness to go out and live in such a way like you believe it's true, that God loves you and loves other people. But I was also thinking about, rather than just kind of feeling bad for ourselves, the other ways that we practice our faith uh, when we come to worship. And how often, and I'll be honest with you all, how often I come to worship like a consumer, I come into the sanctuary and I'm like, I hope things go well today. I hope it's a, you know, the good message and good music and all this. I go primarily to get something for myself. And that's not entirely bad. We know, just like we go to the table to eat food, we need nourishment. And then after the hour is over, we're like, okay, was that that good? I'm thinking, hmm, why didn't I do a good job? It was not so great this morning. But for people that are seeking to please the Lord... The first and perhaps most important question is, what does God think about what we're doing? Are we coming here also in order to give to the Lord, to give ourselves to the Lord, to give our devotion to Jesus, to say, you are good. God, I just wanted to show up this morning to tell you, you're awesome, I can't make it without you. Because that's worship as well. Through the prophet Isaiah, God was talking to worshipers and to people that were seeking to follow him long ago. And I think the rebuke to them is often the same rebuke that God might have for us today. It seems like you want to follow me, says God, because you're saying the right things. You you come to worship, you know, week after week. But it seems like after the worship hour is over, you kind of go right back to treating other people unfairly and, and living as if what happened in worship didn't really affect the rest of your week. You're, you're kind of consumed with yourselves. You know, you go back to, to thinking about yourself, or did I get what I need, or am I a terrible person? That reading from our Old Testament is so clear, we can probably just keep it out on a sign above our sanctuary, just for that regular needed reminder. What are we doing? What are we doing in worship? And as I was reading from the New Testament, we hear Jesus say to the religious people of his day, shine I want you guys to be the salt and the light for this world, for this kind of sometimes tasteless and dark world. And I want you to live your life in such a way with such a knowledge of God's presence and such a delight in his love that your very existence just gives glory to God and other people can see it. And they also want to follow God. 
In a world like ours, there's so much focus, and I spend so much time thinking about what I want or, or what we want, and we don't perhaps think as much about what God wants for this day. If God got us up this morning. Maybe we should ask God, what do you want this morning, Lord? Because oftentimes when I get my way, it means other people lose or, or it's just not so great. But when we ask, what do you want today, God? It's not, it's not all about me. Ruth Ann, maybe you've heard this story before. It's about a church organist, a really wise and sassy lady who knew what worship was about. And after one of the sermons or one of the worship services, somebody in the congregation came up to her and she said, you know, that second hymn you played today, I didn't much care for that, you know. And uh, the organist said, well, I wasn't playing it for you. <laughs> right? We're not singing for performance. We are offering ourselves to God. When I wake up in the morning, instead of thinking what I want or what I have to do, it would be wise to say, you know what, Lord, thank you for getting me up today. What do you want, you know? What, what can I do for you? And not as a burden, like, what do you want? <laughs> but you're the one that made me. You have a purpose for me. What do we get to do together today, God? What can we do today? God, you know me better than I know myself. And your plan, we see throughout history, has led to eternal life. My plans, uh, sometimes not so great. Now, righteousness is not manufactured. Righteousness really is organic. It comes about as we just learn to trust God, to give ourselves to God regularly, to spend time with God, allowing God's Spirit to guide us in the right way. Um, I was reading a reflection this last week about how does, you know, the apple on the tree grow? Does it become fruitful overnight just by really trying hard? And, or does it simply put itself in a place where it can receive the sunlight and, and soak up the nourishment that God has provided for it? And then over time it organically develops and is fruitful. Like us, it's, it really is more about just spending quality time with God rather than just working really hard to bring about the righteousness. God knows that for us, a lot of what we need to do is really self-forgetfulness. What does God want in worship or in our devotional practices? If you do fast, why do we do this? Whatever shape our services take, true worship will result in a greater appreciation for God and a real benefit to our neighbors. A real benefit. So in judging worship, we should consider how was worship today? Well, did I worship today and how does it affect the rest of my week? I think about another, another pastor friend and I'm not, you know, pretending like I have a friend. This isn't me, okay? This is really somebody else. A pastor friend once told me that somebody in the congregation came to him and said, hey, nice sermon today, pastor. And his response was, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, and for me too, Did I, was I listening today? And Brandon, he showed me an inspiring video this last week about how God's love was evident through a YouTuber named Mr. Beast who took the resources he had, the, a lot of money, but he used it to bring sight to 1,000 people through, for paying for operations that would remove this film that kind of grows up and and giving them sight. And so there was a video of watching these people receive their sight for the first time, you know, and he was just being generous with what he had. And I don't know Mr. Beast's story, his spirituality, but what I do know is that God was working through his love to bring sight to others. And I'm like, Jesus is still doing it. Jesus is still doing it today. And it's not just for, you know, wealthy YouTubers, but for us too to be a part of that. What do we get to do for God today? Don't despair. Just like people, just like God's people of old, we do get sidetracked. If you're thinking, as I often do too, you know, we're thinking about ourselves, okay, well, I, I confess that I don't always go to worship in the right spirit. It's okay. God knows our imperfections. God just keeps giving us new chances over and over again. Trust me, says God, I, I know that it's difficult for you. I've covered all your sins. Just start trusting me. Start living today. How shall we worship God today is the question. And then, how about tomorrow? 
and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until we meet again next Sunday. If the Lord gives us seven more days, how will we worship God each day? Or will we just kind of, oh, that was nice, good cup of coffee, and then just kind of blend in and do what everyone else is doing through the week? The scriptures and Jesus give us practical advice. Practical advice. The religious things that you do are not bad in and of themselves, but don't just mindlessly go through the motions without thinking. Stop pointing fingers. Stop speaking evil. Offer your food to the hungry. Whatever you have, share it. Be, notice the people that are hurting and do what you can that will help them in a way that will help them, really. And then you're shining. As you do those things, you are the salt of the earth. And people will see it. And they'll give glory to God. They'll come closer to the heart of love at the center of the universe. I made you to shine like the stars, says God to us. So as I read the scriptures this, morning, this week, I was thinking, is, is our devotion to God deep enough that it lasts throughout the week? Are we really seeking God or are we just settling for going through the motions or religious rituals? If we choose to abstain from certain things for the sake of God, you know, I'm, I don't do that because God doesn't want that. Okay, is that in turn making you love God and people more? Or are you just kind of being more self-satisfied? These are just easy traps that we can fall into. Jesus wants us to avoid that. These are just some of the questions that, this is why we keep reading the scriptures and even preaching the same scriptures over and over again. Like, God, let this sink into me. What do you really want? Not just a whole bunch of people that are moping and saying how awful they are and going through the motions, but people that actually believe and love and trust. So let's not get stuck in some sad, ritualistic, religious pouting. Rather, Let's seek every day to enter into genuine worship, to know who it is that walks with us. That is amazing to think about the one who walks with us. And not just in this sanctuary, but particularly when we're out there. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are a city that God has placed on a hill. So let's live like children of God. Amen. Holy God, each of us comes into this sanctuary with different concerns and joys and worries and fears. And in this place, we lay them before you, Holy God, you who know us better than we know ourselves. And we pray, Holy God, that we would have the courage to allow you to do the needed surgery in our spirit, in our mind, in our bodies. We thank you that you are the good physician, the healer, Help us to trust you. And we are so grateful for the ways that your love find expression in this world. In the humble things and in the astonishing things from our perspective, you are present. We pray not for what we want, but for what we need. And we pray now as you taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And church, now lift your heads for the benediction and the charge. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.